You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Uh, and I have Director Westbrook next. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think the, this budget reflects the strategic plan of this board. There are consequences when you decide to do stuff like uh, looking after the environment and uh, be prepared for emergencies and so on. This morning, we had a pretty good picture of what it looked like to pay for healthcare facilities, 40% of them, of the cost of those. So I looked at this. I think staff did a good job in trying to implement um, and align this budget with our strategic plan. And the reality of the cost of building healthcare facilities and also dealing with inflation, insurance costs, there's all kinds of things that puts pressure on uh, needing more uh, money. So I'm okay with it. I'm not happy about it. Nobody is. Nobody wants to pay more. But this is what, what uh, the results are of the things that we decided we want and, and the agreement that we have in place to pay for 40% of healthcare facilities. So I, I'm, I'm in support of, of this. Hi, Frank Moore here for Life on Gabriola TV. Today we present excerpts from a recent meeting of the Board of the Regional District of Nanaimo, as they are asked to approve a financial plan for the years 2024 through 2028. A long-range plan like this obviously has a lot of impact on all of us who live in the district, including on the services we'll receive and the taxes we'll pay. And the meeting itself is a fascinating look at, well, the way the sausage gets made politically in the RDN. As you'll see, there's a lot of contention during the meeting, as some directors seek to defer voting on the plan until the spending on it can be further examined. By the way, our own representative to the RDN, Vanessa Craig, is also its chair, and so you'll have a chance to observe her in action as she handles that debate. And in the second of the excerpts here, you'll see some of the other stresses and strains that can emerge in a body comprised of seven electoral areas plus four municipalities. It's a sort of booyah base of sometimes conflicting interests, which leaves the directors to try to represent and even defend their community's interests without becoming pitted against one another. I'll be back later to talk more about that often noble effort, but for now, here's the meeting. That is carried. And uh, moving on to reports 10.1, the recommended 2024 to 2028 financial plan bylaw. Um, thank you to Ms. Moore and uh, your team for <laughs> working, working long hours to provide the answers to various questions that you've been receiving and, uh, and for the detailed update on what our current member summaries are looking like. Very appreciative. Um, so I will look to see if a director would care to make the first recommendation in the package that Regional District of Nanaimo Financial Plan 2024 to 2028 bylaw number 1902-2023 be introduced and read three times. Moved by Director Armstrong, second by Director Hemmins. Discussion. Okay, no hands. <laughs> I should have called it quickly. <laughs> Director Stanley. Discussion. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm actually going to not support the financial plan. Um, and I'm really uncomfortable saying this. I'm really uncomfortable doing this. This is not what I want to do. I recognize staff. I recognize the hard work. And I have tons of respect for the process that, that they've been through and the incredible work of Ms. Moore presenting this in objective um, forthright fashion. Um, why I'm not going to support it at this moment in time is that I, 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 I just can't do it because my community simply can't afford it. And with significant increases, um, I, 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 I just can't support having that level of increase uh, to be pushed on to the community members and our taxpayers. And so I, I, we could go on, I could go on. We've debated many items. We've explored trying to make some changes, but 
ultimately like where we're landed today is is there hasn't really been any um relief um from my perspective and so i i just feel like i have to say i can't i'm not going to support this um just because i i know that my community um at least a you know a, a significant portion of them can't financially support this so uh it's nothing to say about staff's efforts um i i because this i feel like there needs to be a lot more conversation and understanding at this time i'm uncomfortable um and i'm just going to say that i can't support it this time thank you and i I've, I've done it again i've skipped over mr holm <laughs> and cuz i was going to ask um and or ms moore for you know, what does it mean when we um if we endorse this to introduce and read it three times, what are the next steps? Because we know we don't need to finalize or the, the financial plan won't be finalized until into the new year. And uh, we will get updated numbers once we get the new parcel information and the assessment information. So I'm wondering if Mr. Holmes, if you can walk us through that a little bit. Uh, thank you, Chair Craig. So the um, uh, recommendation from staff um, uh, probably back in last May uh, to the board uh, with respect to this uh, schedule was to uh, uh, bring us to this point where um, the board would adopt a financial plan uh, that would give staff the mandate to undertake delivery of services and the programs and the policies that the board has uh, has uh, confirmed um, with a couple of caveats, but but we would be able to do so uh, starting January 1st. Uh, um, uh, the, the financial plan doesn't have to be finalized until March 31st. The difficulty with doing that is there, are, um, there is 12 months worth of work to do in 2024 and we, staff could really use the 12 months to do that work. Um, so, uh, uh, the board can certainly provide instruction by way of subsequent resolutions to talk about the matters that uh, they would still like to, uh, to uh, debate further with further information. And those matters, of course, would not be acted on by staff. So the opposite approach of not approving the financial plan means that uh, I would be very reluctant to have any tender documents going out. Um, I wouldn't know what items are going to survive the next conversations. I don't know what matters are of issue to the board. So I'd very much recommend that the board adopts a financial plan and then gives a specific direction on what matters they would like to debate further. Um, thank you. Thank you. And so I do have a few speakers. Um, I put you on there. Uh, I've got Director Melanson and Director Armstrong. And Director Wallace. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to echo Director Stanley's sentiments. I know that the scales might balance differently in other areas where service levels are different. In my area, the scales just don't balance and I'm uncomfortable putting my name on something that will be such a burden to my community. I'm just, it, I cannot put my name on it. I'm sorry and I apologize to staff and the incredible work that Ms. Moore's team has done over the last month to prepare us for this point, but I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with the increases that we're looking at. Uh, Director Armstrong. Thank you. Hearing what Mr. Holmes says, are you asking us for what areas we have concerns about now so that you know? Uh, yes, um, but I think Going a little bit further than that, for example, um, we've been supporting a conversation um, uh, with uh, numerous directors over the past couple of months about resolutions that would come forward, asking for information about those resolutions. Uh, for example, Director Stanley has a resolution um, that she may or may not bring forward, but one we hope you don't mind me sharing this uh, with respect to putting a position on hold pending further, um, uh, further board deliberations. That is, that is exactly the type of uh, direction that we would prefer to get so that we know not to put out an ad for that position so that we don't 
whatever program that position is associated with doesn't get advanced until the board has finished its deliberations on whatever time frame it, it wants. The alternative is we are left wondering about what part of the financial plan will go forward and what, and what part of it won't into the future. Thank you. And just then to bring mine, I would like to see all staffing po uh, positions presented in one meeting where we go through each one of them. And I would like to see, as uh, Director Swain had told us earlier, the org chart as it is now and then the org chart how it would be in the future. Because uh, I'm not comfortable with a lot of the staffing positions either. So th that would be a big concern I have. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Wallace. Uh, thank you, Chair. So I think where the concern lies and where the rub point is, is that, um, of course, staff requires the financial plan to be able to continue to advance the board's business. But the problem we have is that in the first 60 days of 2024, we don't understand which are the capital projects, which are the park projects, which are the... Um, you know, which are the pollution control projects, which are the uh, additions to some of the other projects like climate change, like educational additional staff, not having any sort of uh, ability to prioritize where we can ask for more information and do further work has been a challenge in this process. And I just want to I just want to recognize that I think everybody has worked really, really hard to come prepared to this meeting for this. But I think that's where I'm sensing the most unrest is that if the taxpayers, if we're looking at what the hospital increases are going to do to tax people's tax statements, and then we're going through and we're picking out all the different services, uh, you know, 30% increase here, 28% here, we still don't have an example of a tax roll to put in front of residents. And so we're, I feel we're being asked to kind of approve something a little bit blind. And the, that is a challenge because if we do anticipate that we need to make changes, we need to be able to facilitate those changes in a collaborative and constructive manner instead of just being deconstructive and opposed to what we have in front of us. So sorry to rant a little bit, but that is just a summary of the process that I think we've gone through to get to, the, to today. So I guess what I'm hearing, and I just want to confirm that this is correct, that staff is asking that we adopt the financial plan and then create a series of exceptions to provide direction as to what not to move forward on in the plan that's adopted. And if that's the case, why wouldn't we adopt a, a preliminary plan that would hold in abeyance increases over 2023, say, and then get back to the table in January and when more information comes forth to be able to make more educated decisions. What is the difference between uh, uh, accepting a preliminary uh, status quo, provisional budget for status quo uh, versus what we're being asked to do on the agenda today? Thank you. I, I don't know if, uh, well, I guess when when the suggestion was that we, we don't know what we're we're agreeing to is that it's the updated financial information that Ms. Moore provided us. That is what we would be endorsing and moving forward with. And then from there, we can make, make changes. But I don't know, Mr. Holmes, do you have any thoughts on Director Wallace's question? Well, I'm, frankly, I'm, I feel like a, at a, at, we're at a bit of a loss because I think we've had six or seven budget meetings. I think on November 7th, we went through every single staff recommendation uh, with the sheets uh, in f to the board. And so I don't know what additional information that we could put forward. It, it feels like we're being, um, we're talking about, um, I, I, I don't know what question to answer, quite frankly. It feels like there's all these questions and we haven't heard them. So I, I, I'm not trying to be argumentative or combative, combative Ch Chair Craig. I just, um, uh, I feel like there's this, um, uneasiness and quite frankly what we have in front of us is an ambitious financial plan that the board has put forward and 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 it has yield, yielded some some numbers that um, uh, uh, maybe not everybody's comfortable with and I think a good discussion is let's talk about those programs but I th but but I feel like that that uh, we've been uh, prepared to support that discussion since November 7th and um, and will remain prepared uh, to support any discussion the board wants up to and including adoption. Um, so I, do, I, I frank, frankly, I, do, I just do, I don't know what else to recommend. Thank you. So what I'm hearing from that um, answer is that 
uh, following up what what we were the example of Director Stanley is, is <coughs> if if we need more information or we want to put a pause or abeyance of certain certain things, then we need to be kind of specific about what types of information that we do need. Um, just putting a pause on the financial plan with without specific direction, I think, um, will make it challenging for staff to move forward. So I'm creating um, a speaker's list. I have Director Salter, then Director Westbrook, then Director Gezebracht. Oh, thank you, and I do agree with holding um, this in abeyance and um, just going forward with what's absolutely required. I am not ready to support this at this moment, um, and maybe I won't be, but um, moving it forward to January is not going to um, is not going to stop anything. We we are, I think, for all of us to be comfortable with what we're saying yes to. We need that time. I have I have questions. I was I was talking with a financial officer before our first meeting this morning because I still have questions and questions and questions. Um, thinking that I'm going to now be able to give them to you right this moment, um, I may not be able to give them all to you right this moment. And and then there's a concern there because if I don't give them all to you right now, then what happens in January? Did I did we pass that? I just um, I think sometimes there's you know, when directors are um, feel the need uh, to take a little more time with such a such a large budget, uh, there are significant increases. We're uncomfortable. We want to be able to have more time with it. I don't think that's too much to ask here. Uh, in fact, I think that's really um, what being responsible um, to our citizens is. So I'm quite happy to do that. Uh, in fact, I want to do that because I still have questions that um, I need answered. Um, and I would appreciate that the board understands that. Thank you. Uh, and I have Director Westbrook next. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think the this budget reflects the strategic plan of this board. There are consequences when you decide to do stuff like uh, looking after the environment and uh, be prepared for emergencies and so on. This morning, we had a pretty good picture of what it looked like to pay for healthcare facilities, 40% of them, of the cost of those. So I looked at this. I think staff did a good job in trying to implement um, and align this budget with our strategic plan. And the reality of the cost of building healthcare facilities and also dealing with inflation, insurance costs, there's all kinds of things that puts pressure on uh, needing more uh, money. So I'm okay with it. I'm not happy about it. Nobody is. Nobody wants to pay more. But this is what, what uh, the results are of the things that we decided we want and, and the agreement that we have in place to pay for 40% of healthcare facilities. So I, I'm, I'm in support of, of this budget. Thing. And I'm happy actually that we get this before the year end. It always used to bother me when we vote on a budget uh, halfway through the next year, like in May or something, and then change the course of, or change direction of what the things you want to do. So I'm, I'm quite happy with the work the staff has done and I'm ready to support it. Thank you. Thank you, Director Westbrook. Um, and for reminding us that this, this budget that we're bringing forward is, um, is based on direction that uh, the board has been giving staff over a period of time in our strategic plan. So it's, uh, it is a culmination here. It is our budget. So going to other directors dis uh, discussion, it is our decision about where the next steps are, but uh, it, is, it is our budget and it is a culmination of various direction that the board has been giving. Director Gisbrecht. Uh Thanks, um, I just, you know, Thinking about the process thus far, like I, I think there has been a lot of information that's been presented to the board. There's been ample opportunity to debate and ask questions for individual directors to follow up with staff. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I, I can definitely understand if the increase uh, for people's individual areas is, is too much to stomach and it's difficult to, to support the <coughs> overall <coughs> plan. Uh, that's fair. Um, but I think if there's more things that need to be debated again, um, 
you know, there, there's, there's space uh, to do that, but ultimately it's a 19 person board and it's, it's very difficult to, you know, uh, this process is going to move forward and there's going to be things that people aren't, aren't going to like. Um, so I, I, I do, think that we have been given uh, substantial opportunity um, and if there's still things that people want to bring up and, and, and debate then then let's do it but um, I don't think that more process is particularly needed to like get to a to a, a better spot so um, I, I'm prepared to, to support this this plan um, and uh, and allow things to move on, and, and also open if people want to bring things back uh, that they feel need to be readdressed, um, and and we can have a vote on it. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Stanley. Well, since I'm the unintended poster child for this, um, what, I find myself in the position of having to commit to something on behalf of my community that I'm not comfortable with. And although I've, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, if this, if this way doesn't work, because this is the order of operations right now, we're being asked to accept the whole thing and commit to that. And then, you know, try to make adjustments or try to, you know, explore ways that we can get more information to, to fine tune it. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm uncomfortable with, with, you know, I think as director Melanson put it, putting my name behind that full picture when, you know, uh, my community is looking at nearly 17% increase. I, I recognize that I have responsibility and choices that I've made, but as well, I haven't been able to um, advocate when we're looking at the overall increases. And, and I know, um, you know, if you're from a municipality, I know this isn't your primary primary issue or primary budget, and you've got your other budgets to, to, to focus on and be concerned about, but, uh, you know, in representing in the area that we do, this this is our primary focus, and this is a big impact. And people live in our areas where they don't have municipal taxes because they can't afford them, right? And and they they have smaller budgets, and um, I, and I we have a lot of people that can afford it. But my concern is is that I have a significant number of people who are on fixed incomes or families who are just getting by, and and I'm being asked to, you know, support um, a budget that's going to hit many people over the edge and I can't I can't do that so yes I do have a motion coming forward I'm going to ask to pull out uh, a, a position so that we can explore to see if we can delay it but I feel so desperate to try to find some relief for my community that I, I feel like since we're voting for the whole thing first that that I can't I can't support that because it just feels like too much at least for Cedar South Wellington, Cassidy, and Yellow Point. So I, I don't know how to. I, I, I hear you in, the, in that we've had conversations, but I, 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 I can't. Given that this is the order of operations that we're doing the whole before we're finding out what the outcome will be, I, I just can't, you know, move forward on that. So that's why I've got a motion coming up later. It's because I just I'm, I'm looking at the process as is. Um, and the, the big the big pill is too hard to swallow. I'm hoping to change that, um, but I don't have that opportunity yet. Every other effort that we've tried to, to make changes um, has thus far been voted down. And so now I kind of feel like this is all I've got. So uh, I don't like it because I have so much respect for staff and I have so much respect for their staff or stress levels coming into this that I hate adding to that. But I'm also very aware of that I have community members who are just, they just, it's just going to push them too much. So I'm sorry, um, but I just wanted to explain why I'm, I'm coming at it from this direction. Thank you. I'm still working through first time speakers. Um, Director Swain. Yes, uh, through the chair, um, yes, where to start. <clears throat> so I, I think, you know, when I look at the budget, um, you know, in that 12 service areas that Lanceville you know, subscribes to, um, there's not a lot of room for, for improvement in most of those areas in terms of trying to trim the costs and so forth. So going through that exercise of trying to trim staff here and there, doesn't really help all that much. Um, the one area, and I've spoken to this uh, before, <clears throat> is that corporate services. Um, you know, when you look at uh, between 2023 and 2028, 
uh, for Lanceville, we are going from $88,000 per year to $289,000 per year. It's a 228% increase in corporate services expense to Lanceville. So I'm speaking to about my residents, as I'm sure everybody here is speaking about their residents. But, you know, for me to go back to my community and say, hey, let's be okay with that, I, I can't do it with a straight face because I simply don't understand um, what's contributing to that. When I go back and look at our strategic plan, and this is the one that's on the website, you know, one of the things that we have down is to be fiscally responsible. In my opinion, that flies in the face of that. And again, at this point, maybe I don't understand why we're seeing such a sharp rise in that one area. Um, I just I can't fathom, you know, doing that over the next five years. Um, in terms of process, I think we do need to adopt our financial plan. It's um, prudent, um, you know, for all the many reasons already stated. Uh, it's the way we, you know, have to move our business forward as, as a board. Um, we can always amend our plan. We, we have a few months to make changes and so forth, but I, we can do it. I think some of the changes in corporate services are, are actually required. I would, I'm, I'm in agreement uh, with uh, staff on that. Um, who am I though, right, to say that? But again, I'm in agreement. Um, I can, I can rationalize the expenses there. So, um, but what concerns me is what happens after this year and the next year and so forth and takes us to that closer to that 228% increase. Um, I don't like doing things in silos, but, um, you know, we are, when we look at our tax bills, that's what they are. It's like we have these silos of money that go to different areas. Uh, we just came out of our uh, Nanaimo Regional Hospital District uh, board meeting. And, uh, you know, we talked about increases there. And, and I'm going to, uh, you know, digress a tiny bit here. But, you know, over from 2023 to 2028, we're looking at uh, for a community, um, you know, if you have a house in the price point of uh, 846000 you're going from 2023 paying $298 per year to uh, 2028's number, which is $937 per year. That's a $640 difference in just one part of the tax bill in five years' time. we got to look at the entire tax bill and, and when we're making these decisions. I mean, it is incredibly uncomfortable for me to do anything less. So I do recognize the RDN you know, tax uh, increase that we are looking at is just one of those silos. But when you combine them all and present them, you know, to your community and the entirety of your tax bill, it is it's serious. It's uh, we are putting people into the poorhouse as far as I'm concerned. If I'm feeling it and and my family does just fine, I'm sure there's many others that are feeling it. Um, and I'm not living a high life. I'm not super loaded, but uh, I'm comfortable. But, um, you know, if I'm feeling it, I'm sure there's many others that are feeling it. And when you look at the median income out there, being in the neighborhood, I haven't checked. So this, I'm just a guesstimate here is about seventy to 80000 for an average family. Man, it's, it's a stressful time out there. So, I, but again, I will support the moving the budget forward, but I will be definitely supporting, um, you know, other directors and making changes in the next couple of months. Um, and then my closing remark is if we want to do something about things, I think we really need to start in January as we work forward uh, to developing this financial plan rather waiting, rather than waiting to have it actually presented to us and, you know, later in the year and go, here it is. I think as a board, we have a responsibility to, um, to put that, give staff that direction early on and say, you know what, for corporate services, we don't want to see any more than a 10% increase. Show us what you can do with that rather than waiting till the end of the year to find out it's a 42% increase. I'll leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just an opportunity for any first time speakers. Uh, Director Ringwald. Death and taxes are inevitable. We've all heard that at one point or another. What is not inevitable is escalation. That's the, the, the premise and the purpose of a board and a body such as this, is to manage and control that escalation. That's the central banks in the world and so on. And to some degree, industry and civil society in dealing with inflation. We're in a, an, in for some people here, an unprecedented inflationary environment that we haven't seen for decades. This is impacting everybody. The headline last week, a family of four in Canada 
will see their food bill go up by $700 a year in 2024. And now we're going to throw additional taxes on top of them to affect affordability. I just got information a few days ago that the median income in the news in 2016 census, I don't have the more recent stuff, is 34000 So we're in many of the people in our demographics in our region are um, fixed income. So we're not affecting the rich and the well-to-do, we're affecting the majority that are having a hard time making ends meet and the world is pressing the buttons and putting the weight of the world on top of them right now. And we're gonna add more to that. So you look at the escalation for the next five years, it's not 10, 20%, it's hundreds of percent in five years. That's on top of what we talked about with the hospital this morning. This is not sustainable. It's the duty of a body such as this to provide that governance and control on expenditures. To nickel and dime on hundreds of line items will not achieve that. We're in a dynamic right now where you gotta flip everything upside down and work it out on what we would call a Pareto analysis. Where's the biggest bang for the buck and where's it gonna hurt the most that may be where we have to put the attention and the most is cut services. This is a time where we just got to stick to reality here and start cutting. And that's got to be services. It's nice to have all these things, but we can't afford it in this um, global paradigm right now. So yes, there were commitments and plans and so on, but those are dynamics. They're meant to be flexible. That's the purpose of a body like this, whether it be here or Congress or Parliament in Ottawa, is to be flexible and adjust to the economics of the world and the conflicts and the personal um, agendas of groups and so on out there. Perhaps what we need now is stop playing to timelines. Buy ourselves a little bit more time. We have the power to make that decision right now Give us some time to really absorb this. Perhaps go home and contemplate through the Christmas period what our hearts and souls really want to do to serve our constituents. So we have a motion that I'd like to put out, if, if this is the time, that the board defer adoption of the 2024 to 2028 financial plan until after a special board meeting in January 2024 to discuss staffing and operational impacts to the work plan and the financial plan. That's been moved and seconded. Motion okay. to defer. And uh, if I can speak to that. Uh, yes, yeah. just uh, give me a moment to reset my list. Um, so I'll just take hands now for speaking to the motion to defer. So, so go ahead, Director Ring. One thing that I'd like to see is further information on escalation for the last 12 to 15 years. We have a five-year forecast presented for each of the regions right now. That exists somewhere in documentation for every year for the last 12 to 15 years. And I say 12 because that captures at least two census. Let's look at those five-year forecasts and create a graph and a table of what each of those years actually were and what those forecasts were, because when we can compare them, we can actually see what this body has actually approved in escalation over that period of time. Because that's the real issue is the escalation. Taxes are ine inevitable, affordability is not. And we have to be careful how we impose that on the people that put us here in account and our duty to those people. Thank you. Thank you, Director Armstrong. Uh, speaking to the deferral, I, I won't uh, vote in favor because I think it's important. I think this is a provisional budget. It's not the final. And I think uh, yeah, I heard what uh, our CEO said. I think what I'm hearing is a frustration with the process. And I think we need to have this discussion. I don't think now is the time to do it in the middle of the budget season to try and change it. 
But I, I do think this is a discussion for next term, how we would like to see our budget presented to us, because that's where I'm hearing is the frustration. So, but I think it's important that our staff know that there's certain areas we have to go ahead with. I agree there are, there could be some staffing cuts, but I'm, I'm taking into consideration what the CEO said that it, it's going to mean some projects don't go ahead and we can't afford that because every month we wait, the costs escalate. Thank you. Thank you, Director Perino. Speaking to deferral. Yes, speaking to deferral. Thank you, Chair. Um, I won't, I won't be voting in favor of this motion either. And uh, for exactly the same reasons that uh, Director Armstrong spoke about. But the one thing that I think that we miss when we look at a five year, when we're, when we're planning five years out, is that we forget, and Director Swain talked about the escalation of, of the hospital tax. When you're looking at five years, what you're not anticipating is the number of new homes that are gonna be built and new homeowners that are gonna to help to pay those bills. So while they may seem massive to us today, they will certainly be leveled out by the number of people who will be moving here. I mean, we're, we're putting hundreds of homes into our market in Nanaimo. That, that is gonna make such a big difference. So it'll help to, it, it will not be as drastic as it looks like. Having said that, I certainly agree with Director Ringwald that you know, the only way we're gonna bring the tax down is to cut services. So when you look at your, your districts, if, <laughs> if you don't wanna cut the services, then we're gonna to have to pay the taxes. And that's the real question. That's what you have to decide. But for me, coming up now to uh, CAO Holmes and saying, oh, here we are at the 11th hour and no, we're gonna defer this, um, I think it's an unreasonable request for stuff. Thank I won't be supporting it, thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Salter. Thank you, Chair. First of all, I don't think this is the 11th hour. We've been doing this all the way through this whole process. Many of us have been saying, well, hold it, let's slow this down a bit. What's, what's happening? What are these um, increases our people can't afford? I talked about people living in cars, like on and on, we've, we've gone, um, but we just, nothing's changed. It's not the last minute. This has been happening throughout this whole process. And in fact, uh, happens often. So I think um, the re we're not talking a long time. This is December, um, December 12th. We're, we're not that far off of January. It's, that's not, of course it's next year because it's 2024, but it's not next year as in 12 months from now. So it's a short period of time. I agree. I, I, I would like that time personally to be able to speak to staff who may have some time to speak to me when we don't have more meetings coming up next week, this week. We're, we've been getting a met, um, we've been getting addendums uh, moments before our meetings uh, throughout this process, and it, this is I feel like I've just been hit with information uh, right up until meeting time. So it's for me, uh, I, I do need time. I do have questions. I have a lot of questions, and and I agree with uh, Director Ring or sorry, Alternate Director Ringwald. We do have to look at this process. And we have to, we're going to have to turn a corner. Whether we like it or not, uh, we, we will either make that decision ourselves about what that's going to look like, or we will be forced um, at, at an inopportune time to make a really quick decision because we'll have to turn that corner. We can't keep doing this. Um, we can't afford it. Uh, our, our residents can't afford it. We, we've, got, we've got to get a handle on it. We don't. We haven't had a handle on it as long as I've been sitting right here. So we need to do that. It's important, I think it's um, responsible, certainly fiscally responsible for us to do that. And I'm not sure why we're, we're um, pushing against it. Suddenly we have to get this done now because we can't wait for two weeks. I, I'm not sure um, why we feel that way. Is it because the CAO thinks that? I, I don't know. Um, but the CAO doesn't take the responsibility. We do. We're responsible for what's happening with this budget. And if, if, if uh, residents don't understand that, they don't understand that. We do. And we're the ones that need to be directing it. So we need to get, we need to get realistic about this budget. We need to get realistic about our process and what we're doing. And if it's going to take us a couple more weeks, at least those of us who feel we need that to um, address issues, uh, then so be it. That, Heck, we've all got long lives here. I think we can handle a couple of weeks out of our lives while we get this done. Thanks, and yes, it is It is the board's budget and it's our ultimate responsibility. And um, and yes, it was. it's very 
good to have the reminder about it being a reflection of service level because we hear from our residents and we've been asking staff to do meet certain standards of st service levels and, and this is where we are now with this budget with projects that we've approved and and um, and service levels that we've requested so uh, yeah it is it is our discussion any further thoughts on uh, the motion to defer um, director Melanson uh, thank you chair I would like to speak in favor of the deferral um, acknowledging um, CA homes comments this is our budget this is not created I mean it was kindly created by Ms. Moore, but, but we have given direction for this. And I, I, I sat in that strategic planning committee meeting with all of you and got excited about what we could accomplish together because I think this board has a very ambitious vision and it's frankly one that made me excited for the future of this region. What I'm grappling with through this budget season and the current economy is that I might have to make compromises on that vision, which is uncomfortable for me. I want to see the good work that we can do together. I think, unfortunately, we might have to adjust our expectations on the speed of that vision. Perhaps this moment is not the time to be pushing some of these projects forward. Some of them can be delayed. Now, I'll admit that there's projects on my own <laughs> slate that I will be disappointed to see not go forward and I've resigned myself to the fact that no matter what this budget ends up being it will be higher than what I personally want it to be but it's time that we make compromises this is not sustainable we cannot do this to people I have the benefit of being the youngest member of this board and I'll tell you people my age cannot live here anymore we're being forced out of communities we grew up in Director Croak has said many times that he has a vision for this region to be somewhere that you can grow up, raise a family and die <laughs> in peace for your whole life. And that is becoming unattainable. We have a duty to look at what our vision is and compare it to the reality of what people can afford. And I think it's gonna be uncomfortable for everyone at the table, but I, I ask that we do that. Thank you. Thank you. And speaking to the deferral, Director O'Brien. Thank you, Chair. Um, I will be speaking in favor of this deferral at this time, recognizing that through this whole process, I did, did not hear no enough times. Uh, uh, Director Mallison just mentioned our strategic plan. It's on our, in front of us right now on our placemat. And I, uh, being very conscious of the fact that we were voting with our conscience on many of these things. It was because it was the right thing to do, whether it's climate change, you know, advocacy and so forth. But every one of them came with a price tag. And we didn't recognize that there is a big price tag there, whether it's increased staff to implement all the incredible initiatives that we're doing, or whether it came with any capital costs as well. We should have recognized that it may have been the right thing to do, but we can't afford to do it. And it, because it's really, it's placed down upon us. These strategies that we do is, would uh, definitely make a difference. We're doing our bit, but recognizing of course, we're doing our bit with taxation dollars. We don't have other streams of revenue that actually pays for the good work that we're attempting to do here. And by taking from the taxpayers um, uh, to accomplish this goal, it's just not feasible. It's not doable and it's unconscionable, unconscionable to consider that we are going to actually affect somebody's family well-being uh, life in our district uh, by our good deeds that we are attempting to do. So I will definitely support this deferral. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other hands up. So I'd like to, to, to move forward with, with the vote unless there's any first time speakers that would like to add new information um, to the discussion and the consideration of other directors. Director Stanley. Thanks, I actually just have a question. I'm wondering if staff give us an idea about what, if it was deferred, what, what time in January would be possible? Are, are we talking early January? Are we talking February? Are we, what, what's the reality of, of, of timing on this? Thanks. Mr. Holmes, do you have uh, a, 
I don't sure, know if you would have planned anything there's, already. There's, uh, there's two ways to answer that question. One is when you are available, but the other question is what you would want to have by way of analysis. And so far, I haven't heard what that second thing is. Thank you. Yes, and that goes to part of my point before is that we have to be specific about what we're requesting. If, we, if we're just pushing things down the road without being specific about what information we need, then we're not achieving anything by delaying this because we still do have the opportunity to take what is presented today as our provisional budget, approve it, get the staff working on their work plan, and then we still have time to modify it. So unless we're being very specific about what we're going to achieve by delaying staff being able to start work on our year work plan and what specific information we need to be able to make those decisions, I don't believe we will achieve anything by doing that. Uh, Director Ringwald? Yeah, I think the, um, I just kind of spewed out an analysis, but I think that analysis that I mentioned earlier is what uh, I would personally like to see and I think it would benefit the entire board. Um, and add one thing that um, aspect of that analysis that Director Perino mentioned as well, and I thought about last night, but I forgot to mention, including population growth over the last 12 years. Do this analysis, and the data is in the records, is build that graph of the compiling or adding up each of the five-year forecasts starting from uh, 12 to 15 years ago and build that up so we can actually understand escalation, not just taxes, but the forecasted and planned escalation around um, services so we can see what this has actually been looking like and how the budget and taxation has been escalating in relation to population growth, which is probably our best model for ratepayers. Have we outgrown the tax, the ta push the taxes to a point beyond what the rate paper payers can actually afford? It's a simple analysis. You could probably do it in a day. The data is there, but I think we all need to see that. Are we pushing this expectation of rate payer affordability and growth of population beyond its limits? And if that's the case, maybe our focus should be elsewhere, i.e. affordable housing and other things like that to get us to a point where we can actually afford the services. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so we do have the motion to defer. So uh, Director Perino, did you want to speak to that? And um, then I'll just interrupt you by saying, mm -hmm. I will ask about the motion to defer. And then because I, I think we would need to be very specific, I will look for directors to make specific motions about information that they will require to, um, if, if it passes, um, <laughs> to, to, to make it a, a useful deferral. So first I'll ask the question about, and if, it, if it's supported, then I think we need to be very specific because right now we wouldn't be giving staff any direction about what kind of information that we need. So Director Perino. You said it, um, Madam Chair, when you talked about the fact that this is a provisional budget just to move to the next stage. We can, in fact, take a look at it again, uh, as we will, if we pass it today as a provisional budget, we can take a look at it and start to cross off the projects that we do not feel are necessary to bring the taxation level down. Uh, Director Ringwald, I think, you know, while your discussion about you know, an analysis, it, it, this is way too much to put onto the staff right now. Not a bad idea for next year, but now it's, it's, an, it's an, uh, impossible to do this at this stage. They, they have so much to do to get this ready, but we can cross off projects because I agree with Director Grimwald, it's about the services. We can take a look at the major services and cross off the ones we don't need, which will bring the taxation down, we'll have a better scope of it in the early new year and be able to move on. But if you vote this down, then we're gonna be looking at this again, exactly as you said, Chair, we're gonna be looking at this again in January, not liking it, just saying the same things we're saying today. We need to get the budget to the point where we can cross off what we don't feel we can live with. Uh, Director Manley? 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to vote against deferral at this stage too because we do need to get this moving forward. This is a provisional budget. The analysis between population growth and expenditures is not that simple because we're also dealing with inflation and inflationary pressures that are directly related to some items that are uh, that are more inflated than others. For instance, the cost of steel, uh, concrete, the things that we need to build the infrastructure that we're required to build in, in terms of having water, sewer, uh, roads, etc. Those things that we need to have. Um, when I go through these budgets, I mean, there's a number of items that are just, th these are for the electoral areas to speak to. And I see cost increases in parks. I see cost increases in community services. And when you increase those costs, your administration costs go up. So the electoral areas need to figure out what it is in their area that they want to cut. It's not really for us directors from the city to determine what things in your area you want to you want to pair back on. That, you know, there are things that are beyond your control that are increasing the Vancouver Island Regional Library budget. We're paying, the city of Nanaimo is paying the bulk of Southern Transit. We're paying for a lot of these other services, but we do go, you know, our citizens do go out and use the parks, the regional parks, and increase those demands, but we, you know, we're contributing to that as well, but we need to look at what those, you know, projects are in the individual electoral areas and you need to decide what needs to stay and what needs to go because it's not just the cost of that individual park, it's the administration that goes with it, it's all of the other added things. And so there, there's tough decisions to be made if we're going to pare back this budget, but I agree, it's really up to... Um, the area directors to figure out what is important in their area and where they're going to cut. Thank you. And uh, I had Director Gesselbrock, if you have something brief and new to add, and then I'm going to call the question. Uh, I, I just really think Director Manley's point needs to be really seriously taken. Like I, I'm quickly flipping through the electoral district area budgets. It's like your community park, your, your district planning, uh, uh, that are like the huge cost drivers of your areas. These are projects well under your control that if you want to bring forward and like reduce, you know, your tax increase, bring these things forward. We've had two months to go about and do this. And I think a lot of the discussion is around nickeling and diming sort of shared regional level things that really are very small cost drivers in your, in, in the budget. And so I just, it, it does irk me a little bit holding up this like larger process for, um, discussion on areas that are, are a much smaller impact on the, on, on the electoral to area budget where, um, you know, these are things that are well under your control to, to, to bring. And so I, my suggestion is to approve this budget. And then if there's stuff that air, the things that you'd like to cut, bring it, bring it forward. And I think, you know, everybody is open for that level of discussion. So, uh, yeah, it just it is quite surprising actually looking at the different individual budgets on that, and I don't think that gets talked into, uh, uh, talked enough about. Thank you. Yes, the complexities of regional district budgets. Yeah, let's let's call the question. I think we've had a lot of discussion on whether or not to defer. Okay, Director Stanley, go. Short, short comment. You've already spoken. It's not so a comment. It's another question. So uh, I'm looking at when uh, other positions. So fire services operations co coordinator. No, I want to know if we can. I want to know just to determine my vote on deferral if we can bring back these positions. They were only electoral area, but it got voted by the whole board. Um, I don't know if I can bring this back again because we already had a vote on this and it will affect my visit, my vote on this deferral. That's what I was asking. Oh, point of, point of order. I, I believe I heard a point of order called and that should be addressed. So I think Director Armstrong needs to state a point of order and it needs to be addressed by the chair rather Thank than you. entertaining further dialogue. I believe in terms of the like, hierarchy of... Uh, what you know, board governance and so forth. I think point of order, point of order takes precedence. Thanks, Director Swain. Uh, what was your point of order? Thank you. 
the deferral. We need to stick to the deferral, not about all this other stuff. Either we defer, or we don't. Right. We're way off base. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hill, did you have any comments on, on the question? Uh, the question, Chair Craig, that we heard with respect to the deferral was uh, was about a position that was voted on previously about eliminating that position. And uh, so we had talked some time ago in case this came up about uh, the ability to defer that position. Is, is that a reconsideration and sort of a sort of a backdoor to the same question? And we view it as uh, not as uh, as a not as a reconsideration. We view it as a different motion because it would still be in the financial plan. Then the position would be, the instruction would be to defer the position such that staff would not act on it pending further discussion by the board for new information. So the answer to uh, Director Stanley's question as we understand it is that a motion to defer one or more positions, even if it's been voted on previously as a removal, uh, that uh, deferral motion would not be out of order and um, and uh, would be um, would be uh, instruction that would be new and different instruction that would have been previously been voted on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so on the motion to defer, all those in favor? And I note Director Wallace, Director Wood, Director Swain, Director Salter, Director Wing Ringwald, Director O'Brien, Director Melanson, Director Stanley, I'm looking online. I don't see any hands online. And those opposed, I note Director, am I going too quickly, Ms. Hill, or am I okay? Okay, Director St Armstrong, Director Eastmere, Director Perino, Director Gesselbrecht, Director McLean, Director Craig, Director Hemmins, Director Manley, Director Westbrook. Uh, the motion's defeated, um, nine to eight. It was all directors, one vote for that. Thank you. The motion was defeated uh, by a vote of nine to eight. So because the motion to defer was defeated, the original motion that the Regional District and Nanaimo Financial Plan 2024 to 2028 bylaw number 1902-2023 be introduced and read three times is on the floor now. And I think we've had a lot of discussion. So I'm just going to go ahead and call the, oh, Director McLean, you haven't had a chance to speak or you no. haven't chosen to speak. So if you'd like to speak to this. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I would just like to say I hear there's a lot of discomfort with the current plan. And if anyone wants to bring motions to examine anything to remove from it uh, going forward, I would definitely support that, support having more information and more discussion. Uh, but at the moment, I will be supporting the provisional plan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and so all those in favor, I'll go around the horseshoe. I'll wait for Ms. Hill to get ready. <laughs> Director Armstrong, Director Eastmere, Director Wood, Director Perino, Director Swain, Director Gesselbrecht, Director McLean, Director Craig, Director Hemmins, Director Manley, Director Westbrook. I think that's complete. And those opposed? Director Wallace. Director Salter, Director Ringwald, Director O'Brien, Director Melanson, Director Stanley. And I think that is all. And this is a weighted vote, so we'll just wait for the calculation. Welcome the vote carries. Uh, weighted vote of 43 to 20. Thank you. The vote was carried. So moving on to the next recommendation in the package that the Regional District of Nanaimo Financial Plan 2024 to 2028 bylaw number 1902-2023 be adopted. Is there a director that would like to make that motion? 
Director McLean, seconded by Director Perino. Discussion on this. I think we've pretty much covered it all. <laughs> so I'll just call the question, all those in favor. And I'll go around the horseshoe, Director Armstrong, Director Eastmere, Director Wood, Director Perino, Director Swain, Director Gezebracht, Director McLean, Director Craig, Director Hemmons, Director O'Brien, Director Manley, and Director Westbrook. And those opposed? Director Wallace, Director Salter, Director Ringwald. Um, I don't have a vote for Director Melanson or Stanley. Opposed? You can't abstain. So you vote in favor. So Director Melanson will be voting in favor. Director Stanley is opposed. And I think that is everybody. You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. It's important to note that while the financial plan for 2024 through 2028 was adopted, it's a provisional plan, which, as you heard, is still subject to changes. In this final excerpt, Director Sean Woods, representing the City of Parksville, seeks to begin discussion of one possible change, which would be to delay a major bridge project planned for Electoral Area A. That's the area of Cedar, adjacent to our own, and its representative has a vigorous response to the idea of delaying the project, which in turn leads to an enlightening discussion of the complexities of running the RDN, where, as one director puts it, only some areas get the benefit of the taxation in some years, and others have to wait their turn. She describes it as a layer cake of taxation. Director Wood, did you have a Thank question? you, Chair, just a question. Um, to me, a lot of this relates to a specific service or a specific project that we can talk about. I think that's what everyone is kind of should be doing and probably staff is dying for us to do that. Um, and I don't know what part of the agenda we should be bringing these forward, but uh, I believe as on the prevailing vote of the pedestrian bridge, $5.2 million trust bridge, um, whenever that would be in order for, um, for, for the agenda today, Chair, I would love to bring that forward for discussion as I was on prevailing vote. Thank you. So you're wanting a reconsideration? If that's what we're, if that's what we're talking about at budget time, then I suppose it would be a reconsideration. I don't actually know if according to our board bylaws, that's in order for today. Um, first I'll, I'll, to I'll um, tally the vote because the yes, vote was taken. Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. It, it carried okay, um, with 47 you. to 15. And then, um, and please just, uh, while I was tallying up, can you repeat the question? So there was um, a recent decision at a board to support a bridge project. Um, Director Wood voted with the prevailing side and is wondering if he could bring that decision back for reconsideration. Director Armstrong. Thank you. I think it's really important if we're going to do, do this now, if, if we do, but what is, what is the impact to the, this year's budget? Because that money could have been saved already. So for me, like I need to know that and I need to know from the director because it is her area, how important that is to her people. So I, I personally think we need another, another meeting and we need to discuss our process. And, um, you know, and, and I guess for me it's confusing because at the city we do it so much differently where it's broken down into categories like corporate services does theirs, public works does theirs. Each of them comes with their 10 top priorities, and then we make a decision as to which priorities get funded. So it's just, it's a much smoother, easier way. And I think it's a discussion we need to have for next year. We can't change our process now, but that's where I'm hearing the confusion for people is, you know, we approve in one area and then we forget that we already approved there. And then all of a sudden this big tally comes up. So if we stuck to our areas, which is almost reflected on our strategic plan, it would really streamline the process better. And I think make it easier for people to follow. Thank you. It's a, it's a complicated process with the different areas, but um, Ms. Hill, did you have a information about that question? 
Um, yeah, for reconsideration, that would be unnecessary because there was more than one meeting cycle ago, and it would be a motion to rescind or amend. Oh. A motion to amend the financial plan? Or um, that, that specific project, is that what we were um, speaking to? Yes. So at, you were going to consider, and it wouldn't, because it's, it, it's not a reconsideration, it wouldn't need to be at this meeting necessarily. It could be at a January meeting. Um, yeah, and it could be one of those motions to hold in advance in terms of direction on uh, not moving forward with the financial plan as is. So it could be, um, I know you've worked on some wording that could be considered to not move forward on a certain project pending further discussion. Is this, I'm Director Wood, I'm kind of putting words into your mouth because I'm not exactly sure what um, you're hoping to do. Chair, I don't mean to mean, make your meeting more complicated than it already is. Um, I would just think that's one item that we could discuss at some point and it does not have to be this meeting. And I, I think it's, I think it's indicative of uh, speaking to a specific project or a specific service. And I think that's what, I feel like that's what the board and and staff would like the board to be doing. Thank you. So I think the wording that I've seen for for a different motion was for staff not to. I. I'm trying to find the email, Mr. Holmes. Do you have it? About don't take action on something. Okay. Um, one of the motions, uh, as an example, would be that the board direct staff to not act on such and such project until there is an opportunity to, and if there's further direction there. So, is that something that you would like to make a motion? Yes, that would be my motion. Thank you. So that staff not act on the trust bridge project until the board has had an opportunity for further discussion? Specifically if it, if it uh, impacts this next year's budget, which I'm not sure either. It does. There's Thank about 200,000 for planning in sure. the 2024 budget, I believe. So it may be a small amount compared to what the total project is, but all those small amounts do add up. Thank you. Okay, so you're making that motion. Ms. Hill, is that motion in order and understandable? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, um, is there a seconder? Seconded by Director Wallace. Any discussion on this? And again, it's not saying that we're canceling the project or changing our mind. It's something that we would want to consider more. Um, Director Stanley? Yeah, thank you. Um, oh, this is a surprise, I guess. Like I said, I was on the firing line before, so um, this is, the, the the only part of the the budget that the bridge is being evaluated is further study about these like the feasibility now that we've chosen the type we're talking about two hundred and eleven thousand dollars so although there's been lots of you know numbers tossed around you know the five point two million which was used here and, and honestly like I've had so many comments about this bridge recently um, we have so little regional investment in the southern area of the RDN and so little regional investment in area A. And this project was started 20 years ago and we've been waiting 20 years for our project to finally happen. Director Stanley, so at this point I'm, we're not arguing for or against the project, it's whether or not we're going to put this project on hold until we have uh, further discussion. Okay. It, my point stands, we've been waiting 20 years. So to put it on hold, it's, it's just another like stall. And it, it has been increasing in value because we haven't been able to move forward in it. And I, I guess I'll end it there. Sorry, Director Armstrong and then Director Salter. I'll be voting against motion. We had lots of discussion at the Parks and Recs Trail and at the thing, and, I, and, as, and as I hear from Director Stanley, it's something that's very wanted. It's a, it's a minimal amount, and there has been very little investment there. Director Salter? Oh, it changed your mind. Anybody else want to speak to this motion to um, hold the uh, any work on this project until we've had further discussion? See no hands, all those in favor. Director Wallace. And those opposed. 
Director Armstrong, Director Eastmere, Director Wood, Director Perino, Director Swain, Director Gezebrock, Director Salter, Director McLean, Director Craig, Director Ringwald, Director, I shouldn't actually bother doing this, Director Hammonds, I'm, but I'm, it started. Director O'Brien, Director Melanson, Director Manley, Director Stanley, Director Westbrook. Thanks, that's defeated. I believe, uh, Director Stanley, though, you did have um, a motion that you would like to bring forward. I did. Oh, my mic is still on. Okay. Um, oh, that's an excellent question. I will paste that into the chat. I believe it was, sent, was around. sent out by email too, right? Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, I can do all the above. Okay, that the board directs staff to not act on the information technologist position proposed in the financial plan until there is an opportunity uh, to receive more information and for further deliberation on this position and the related service level impact. Is there a seconder? Director McLean? Uh, Director Stanley, would you like to speak to your motion? Um, well, <laughs> I've spoken a lot with regards to the overall financial consideration, which is one of the primary motivations is to try to look at something within this budget where we have a lever to pull for wiggle room. Why I've chosen this one in particular is because from what I understand, um, there's been significant increases in IT lately um, to address obviously a need. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that because there has been um, an increase in this department, uh, in the you know somewhat recent past, um, that it is one of those uh, places that if we didn't move forward at this time, that it wouldn't have um, a significant impact. Obviously, um, that's a question that I have, and this motion allows for an opportunity to ask that question and to receive information from staff to find out if it is an accurate assumption. Thank you. Any further discussion on this motion? I see no hands, so all those in favor? And any opposed? I note Director Eastmere, direct, no, not Director Eastmere, sorry, Director Wallace, Director Perino, as opposed. So we will um, put a pin in that position and, and get additional information in the new year. Director Perino. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, question through you, if possible, to, to, to I really want to make uh, Mr. Holmes director. <laughs> I'm wondering if there is a better way of doing this where staff come back with what they feel um, would impact the, the level of services and what they feel ought to be cut at this point. Now that they've listened to the last two months of this, I'm, I'm just wondering if we're we're deciding, uh, the struggle and the reason why I voted against this last motion is because I'm not sure that we're doing this the right way. And I'm just wanting to turn it back to staff to say, the tax is too high. Can you tell us what you believe we can do without to lower the taxes that you can live with? Because when we're making some of these decisions, I'm just not so sure that they can do without that position. And, and so I'm wanting, I'm wanting them to tell us after everything we've been through the last two months, tell us what we can cut at this stage that would have an impact and get us through to lower the tax and still give them what they need. Uh, well, I'll let Mr. Holmes handle this, but we've had variations of I know, this discussion I know. over time, which is, you know, this budget is, is basically how to implement board direction um, that we've been providing over the last year, over the last two years. And you know we've done these strategic plans. We've created a parks and trails master plan. We've reviewed bylaw enforcement. Um, we're we're creating um, additional emergency management, and also the province is is putting obligations on us that we new obligations that we have to address. And so um, asking staff to say what part of our direction do you not want to implement, I think is um, is tricky. But uh, you'll probably be more eloquent, Mr. Holmes? Um, I doubt that, Chair Craig. What I would add to that, though, is um, inherent in the financial plan is a series of programs or services that are important to the board, and of course the board members vote on these things. And so the 
priority of one service or another would be a different priority for each of you. And that is, of course, why the vote happens and that's why the majority carries these things. There's an additional complexity in a regional district service where in our 11 participating areas, four municipalities and seven electoral areas, each of these services priority, priorities affect a different bundle or combination of these areas. Sometimes, um, you know, if you think about the uh, uh, Greater Nanaimo Pollution Control Center, the vast majority of that service is just the city of Nanaimo. A little bit of landfill, SFN, but primarily the city of Nanaimo. And um, so, um, and we could go through the, all of the services and it would be a similar co you know, combination of the various jurisdictions. So for us to try to step our, it would, what I feel is very much stepping into your shoes in trying to talk about which services are more important than another um, and inherently therefore which areas should have services versus vis-a-vis -vis another. I think that, com uh, that conversation very much uh, belongs at the table with us providing information to support that conversation. Um, what I would suggest, um, uh, you know, the, the comments came earlier today, the, the big budget changes reflect really the big service changes or a contraction of services. And um, I think the board members, if they want to make big changes, need to contemplate those types of things. Um, the, the, the motion that just passed here, I think is an excellent motion in that the board will be contemplating some amount of budget cut with the impact that budget cut would have. And I think that's exactly what the board needs to do. The impact that on the financial plan that that one position will have will be um, uh, not really noticeable at the household level. But of course, as directors regularly point out, it's this amalgamation of things that aren't very noticeable at the house level that accumulate and aggregate into something that is very noticeable at the household level. Again, that debate belongs in your hands. Thank you. Did that answer your question, Director Perino? Oh, I'm just trying to find, thank you, Chair. I'm just trying to find an easier way to, because, you know, just trying to, trying to cut things, it's just hard to know what needs to be kept and what could be cut because uh, Director Wood just tried to make a motion you know, and 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 it, it it just doesn't make sense. So it's just hard to know what we're voting for and what we're not. Uh, what's the right move and what to vote for and what what isn't. I I was just trying to make it a little easier. Thank you. No, thank you. That's something we're all dealing with. Director Wallace and then Director Salter and then Director Milan. Uh, thank you, Chair. So when we received the report for the growing communities funding allocation, there was a really great framework that was utilized to prioritize those projects. And in addition to that, we have a community work funds uh, list of projects that are, are gov I guess, governed a little differently or not evaluated in the same way. I think that this could be an effective tool for the board to use to go through a series of projects that have been added to the financial plan in the last two years that we would have the metrics of the framework to be able to make some better decisions on areas of the financial plan that could be uh, further evaluated or further further discussed in January. So my question through the chair to Mr. Holmes is we working from those two lists, but knowing we have the criteria that was utilized for the growing communities fund, is that information that could be provided to the board of all of the projects, heeding Director Gesselbach's comment that there's a number of, I think maybe um, Director Gesselbach and Director Manley said, what about all these park projects? Where's the regional priority in, in this? Is there opportunity for us to combine the community work projects, growing community funds projects, put them all through the same evaluation framework and come up with a list of projects for the, for the next five-year plan? Mr. Holmes? Um, Chair Craig, I think the short answer is yes. The caution I would have is that the board has chosen to administer its community work fund uh, individually and the growing communities funds came with the proviso for regional districts that um, the intention from the ministry's point of view was to not divvy up the money, assign them to a, region, to a rural area and, and, and work them like that. We have provided a matrix that of course Director Wallace described uh, perfectly um, in terms of signing a series of criteria and we could be happy to redistribute that. Um, what we also did, though, is, is 
recognized uh, how various participating areas in each of those services um, uh, would have benefited from those funds as well, and the board's in possession of that as well. So taking that criteria and putting it into other projects, um, uh, you know, we, we cer certainly could do that, but to the extent that a project is a community parks project, for example, and it only affects uh, one tax, one one um, representative at this table. Um, I think the board would want to want to decide whether or not um, that's where it wants to uh, intervene with that particular participant's uh, 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 project. Uh, that's not to say some of the bigger projects that involve multiple um, uh, multiple jurisdictions uh, is is that a, an appropriate framework to apply to it. I, I, all I can say is that the framework's available if the board would like us to bring that forward uh, as an experimental uh, process on one project or another, we would be happy to support that conversation. Thanks. To follow up, Director Wells? Yeah, thank you. So was would there be any benefit then on looking backwards a little bit? So there's some areas that have received grant funding to move projects forward in the last uh, five years and some other areas that have not. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm referencing Director Stanley's comment about length of time to achieve projects with some sort of equity across the region. And so I'm not suggesting that every project go through this matrix because I don't think that every project hits a threshold of impact to other areas. I think that we would want to look at the regional services because I think the reality is that what is a priority in Area G is, is not a priority for the City of Nanaimo. And that, you know, Area G has 40 services, 40 different services that are uh, hived up, I guess, into local service areas and paying into the regional services. It's the most, it's very complex, and it is a layer cake of taxation. It's very difficult to, it's impossible actually to opt out of things that may not be a priority for G. And, and so I think that governance and services question of the region is a good one for the future, although I don't think it's in this budget. So I'm wondering if there would be benefit to adding an additional item to the matrix about which areas have moved projects forward in the last five years and which haven't, so that we can also try to address, address the equity issue of the region. And I'll use an example of emergency management. So we have new requirements from the province. We have uh, you know, increasing challenges with climate change and fire service changes with halls changing from society to RDN. We have a definite need to grow the support services for that. But there's an example where some areas in the previous regime and the lesser amount of funding and resources achieved things. They achieved evacuation planning. They achieved reception areas. They achieved some things like that where other areas didn't. And so to Director Gesselbrock's comment, it isn't a matter of just pushing individual projects forward and then deciding to take them off. It is a shared service that means only some areas get the benefit of the taxation in some years and others have to wait their turn. And so I think that that's an important, that's an important item that I hope that the, the directors from Nanaimo understand is that Area G paid into that emergency management that delivered a service in an area like B or E that is, didn't actually go back to Area G residents. And so now they need an evacuation plan. Area G has to come up with additional taxation or grant funding to achieve the same thing. And so I think that that is the rub point that, that I have with having trying to represent an area with 40 services whose priorities are aging out infrastructure, drinking water supply, aquifers have salt water intrusion, um, you name it. Those are, those are the issues that I need to try to solve through the service delivery at the regional district. And I'll, I'll just say the bridge because I, you know, the area G will be paying into a bridge and will also be paying into other regional park services in the north. But the reality is it's drinking water or a bridge. It's not like must have, must have. It's must have and how can we figure out how to achieve that without creating such an unsustainable level of taxation onto the multiple services that are, that are delivered because each and every one of them has an admin component. And it's, that's the escalation that's happening in G. So I, I hope that provides a little bit of insight, but I think also we need a framework to be able to make these decisions. And I think an important piece is, is how, do we, uh, how do we achieve some equity on these regional services so we stop having two people from Parksville vote to 
talk about a bridge and then it becomes north versus south. That's not productive. So anyways, if it's possible, I don't know what the motion sounds like. That's it for now. By the way, we'll be bringing you a year-end interview with director Vanessa Craig soon on Life on Gabriel TV. Meantime, thanks for watching.